This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. A warning to our viewers, this next story contains graphic footage of police violence. Yes, we end today's show here in New York City, where a police officer, Vincent D'Andrea, has been charged with assault, criminal mischief, harassment and menacing, after video showed him violently shoving a peaceful protester to the ground as he shouted an expletive and a misogynistic slur at her. 20-year-old Dunya Zayer was at a protest against police brutality at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on May 29th, when she asked the officer why he was ordering her to get out of the street. He responded, again, by violently shoving her to the pavement. A bystander filmed as she was shoved, then rolled onto her side. She suffered a seizure, was hospitalized with a concussion. For more, we're joined by that young woman. Dunya Zayer joins us here in New York, accompanied by one of her attorneys, Tahani Abushi, who's a civil rights lawyer and candidate for Manhattan District Attorney. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, Dunya, I'm so sorry for what happened to you. Um, we now have all seen this um, horrifying video, once again, as this uh, police officer shoves you to the ground, uh, forcing you to forcing you against the curb, your shoes fall off. Um, describe that day for us. What was taking place there? Um, I went to the protest on Friday night. Um... You know, to show more, to show my support towards the Black Lives Matter movement and you know against police brutality, um, the protest was peaceful. Um, the cops started stampeding towards the crowd, and I noticed that peaceful protesters were getting hurt. Like it, it was a scene straight out of a, a horror movie, something that you wouldn't expect. I knew how important it was to record things like that, so I took my camera out to start recording. And um, there's a video on Twitter of the recording that I took where I'm running backwards in the direction the officers are telling us to go to, and I'm trying to record while running backwards. And Officer Vincent D'Andrea and his commander, Craig Edelman, they're walking in my direction. And Vincent D'Andrea tells me to move. And I asked why, while still moving in the direction he was telling me to go to, and he smacked my phone out of my hand. Um, and then he called me what he called me, and before I could put my arms up to uh, block myself from the lunge I could see out of my peripheral vision, he shoved me very hard now, to the ground. I'm going to show that video of you being shoved for a particular reason, because we don't like to repeat video. But I want people to be able to see, as he pushes you, he is not alone, as you said. He's next to a commanding officer, and many others walk past you as this happens, uh, in the same way we saw happen with uh, Martin Gugino, um, or Gugino, in Buffalo, an entire, it looked like, battalion walked past him, no one helping. So the police officer pushes you down, you have all these other officers, he is behind him as a white shirt, right, a commanding officer, and they do nothing to help you. Um, so can you talk about what happened to you after? After I hit my head, I was um, very confused and shocked. I was in a lot of pain. Like, the impact was hard. And other protesters were trying to help me get up, and they walked me to a nearby stairwell, like, five feet away. And I lose my memory at the stairwell, but that's when I had the seizure. I didn't have the seizure immediately after hitting my head. It was about five minutes later. And then I got sent to the hospital in an ambulance, and my memory comes around getting to the hospital. Um, it was a hard impact, and it was unprovoked and not expected, definitely not necessary. He called me a, a name. He wanted to hurt me. He was angry. I don't know why. Maybe he has something against women. He has something against people protesting, something. But I was backing away from him, and I didn't do anything to him. And he called me a name, and then he followed through by injuring me. I wanted to bring Tahani Abushi into the conversation. You're a civil rights attorney. Um, yes. Can you talk about the significance of this video? Uh, Dunya, we asked you before if you minded if we played this. And can you talk about the effect it has on you, but your feeling um, about the significance of it? I mean, it, it's unusual. There's so many things going on that this was captured. I have a— um 
a love-hate relationship with the video. Um, it's important for videos to be taken, even when they're graphic, even when they're difficult to watch, because we live in a system that does not hold cops accountable. It takes everything in our power to hold them even 25 percent accountable compared to a regular person. Um, and it's only if you have 100 percent proof, you have to have a video. They will never, ever, ever punish a police officer for doing wrong unless you have a video. So I'm grateful that the video was taken. I'm grateful that it raises awareness on the situation. I'm grateful that it's helping me attempt to get justice on the situation. But the negative aspect of it is that there's a video of me getting hurt and people can watch it and laugh at it. They could enjoy watching me get hurt. They could have their own opinions on it. It's difficult um, to have other people try to tell me that I, does, you know, tell me one thing or another regarding me getting assaulted, and it's difficult to watch it. I can't watch the video, especially the fact that it has gone as viral as it has. Again, I'm grateful that um, I'm getting uh, an attempt of justice for the video. Johnny. But when I'm scrolling, it's when I'm scrolling through social media and I'm trying to not find myself being assaulted and then it just shows up right there, it's not enjoyable. Which was why we asked you before um, uh, if w it was okay to run your video. Um, and um, horrifying as it is, Tahani Abushi, can you talk about the significance of what happened to Dunya Zayer um, and uh, in your years of representing people? Yeah, so I've uh, been doing this work uh, fighting against the use of excessive and deadly force for over 10 years in New York City. Um, I know the NYPD patrol guide very well and how it plays out in the court system. And video is so important because it takes a lot to force NYPD to not only cooperate and give up identity of the officers, to hold them accountable, but it becomes a he said, she said. And we understand that in our city, a word of an officer is always taken with much more weight than that of the civilian, especially when they also have the power to arrest. And so the arrest becomes a question of integrity for the victim. And it's very difficult to piece out in court, uh, which can stretch out over a year or two years' time. But having the video for the world to see um, clearly um, memorializes what happens, and it records the actions of the officer and allows us to hold them accountable. And to, and to pause it in certain moments and to ask, what could you have done differently here? Or what was the provocation and thought process here, as opposed to it getting jumbled up behind this, oh, it's this ma massive agency, we don't know what happened, it was dark, and all these other distractions that take away from holding an officer accountable, which is what the city has shied away from doing. But I have dedicated uh, my career to holding law enforcement accountable and to getting the city to face these questions from families and from people like Dunya, who now are expected to just go home and act like nothing happened and live with this trauma for the rest of their life. Dunya, what do you want to see happen right now? The officer has been charged with various levels of menacing harassment and assault. Uh, the commanding officer, as far as I know, hasn't been charged. Is that right? That's yeah. correct. Um, regarding the commanding officer, I feel like a transfer of Commander Kirk Edelman was completely inappropriate. Moving a problem to another community does not solve the problem. It's not correct. He clearly is not fit to hold a position where he's supposed to be um, preventing his officers from doing the wrong thing. A commander who could watch his lower officers commit a crime and do nothing should not be a commander. He should be fired. He should lose his position. If anything, he should, you know, it's difficult to go that far, but he should also be charged. He, like he he didn't do anything. If you're an officer and you could witness an assault, that you're you're aiding in the assault, as as far as I'm concerned. And but, various um, legislative bodies are starting to say, if you do not um, uh, hold another officer accountable, you too will be charged. Exactly. And then with Vincent D'Andrea, I don't understand how um, 
you know, like, he was suspended. I hope that they continue that to fired, because he should, you know, what, is, what does his suspension solve? Him coming back and being able to do exactly what he did to me again in the future. There should be no second chances with officers. There, there, there is no, um, it's not acceptable. We can't normalize the way they've been treating us. Uh, and the way they treat uh, p uh, black people, the worse, way worse. You, you, it's not normal. You can't justify it. You can't make excuses for it. They have to be held accountable immediately. No suspension. Fired. As of, as, uh Dunya, we have to go, but I want to thank you so much for being with us. Dunya Zayer is an activist shoved by New York police during a recent anti-police protest in New York City. Tahani Abushi, civil rights attorney, her attorney, running for Manhattan DA, demanding that police be held accountable. That does it for our broadcast. Go to democracynow.org for all our stories. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay safe.